What do you picture when you think of Scotland? Close your eyes for a second. Bagpipes, plaid kilts, stone medieval castles, haggis, whiskey. Yeah, it's all accurate. And the Highland Coo. Do not forget the Highland Coo. I just went to Edinburgh for two days with my two daughters and my older daughter's fiance, and we did everything. I actually feel like I don't need to ever go back to the city again because everything was crossed off the list. So it was a little bit of an aggressive itinerary, but totally worth it because we did and saw so much. So this is a vlog of our two full days in Edinburgh. And if you're considering going to Scotland and stopping in Edinburgh, or you just wanna follow along on our travels, I invite you to watch the rest of this video. Let's go. So we just landed in Scotland. I fell on the bus. <laughs> Wow. We arrived pretty late to the Edinburgh airport, and it's pronounced Edinburgh, not Edinburgh, like I thought my entire life. So just think of what your kids say to you, bruh. Here we are on the bus to the city center. What are you most excited to see in Scotland? I'm hoping to see some Trek memorabilia in a castle, and maybe a cow. A cow? Oh, maybe. Like we'll see. We got dropped off at the city center and had to figure out which way to go, but we're just awestruck by the architecture already just at this bus stop. We had about a 10, 15 minute walk from the bus stop to our hotel, which was fine, except it was already midnight, so we were dragging. Here we are in Scotland. Washing my clothes, because they said they had, don't, don't show my underwear. It just looks like clothes. <laughs> I am a washing machine. They said they had laundry services here, so we, all ran out of underwear, but it's three dollars a pair to have them serviced. So here we are. We had pre-purchased castle tickets, which I recommend because they were sold out for that day. So we did have to get up and get walking across town. Just a random, you know, 15th century church. It's really hard not to get distracted by the architecture and attractions along the way. Pretty much everything in Edinburgh is located on this walkway called the Royal Mile, which culminates in the castle, which you can see there in the distance on the hill. It's got all the shops, all the restaurants, all the attractions. It's busy, booming, and fun. The castle was built on Castle Rock, and some castle has occupied this space since the 11th century. We were delighted to find out that we had arrived at exactly the time that they were doing the Royal Gun Salute to mark the arrival of His Majesty the King to the city of Edinburgh for Royal Week. AKA, they were launching cannons over the city, and it was super cool. On top of the castle grounds, they were offering free whiskey tastings, and this was a honey whiskey. 350 is 250, mm. and 100 mils is 8, 25. Sweet. Oh. oh, what's it called? It's a tablet. Tablet. It's a fudge tablet. They're um, delicious. Not chewy. Flaky. Flaky. Mm. Fantastic. Very good. It's like eating brown sugar. Mm. Everywhere you looked were plaques naming historic royals. We waited in line to see the crown jewels, but of course no recording was allowed. And then into the royal apartments where every fireplace was bigger than the last one. Green means go. The UK is so smart. It smells so smoky in here. Whoa. Look at all those bayonets. What are those? Bayonets? Swords. The Great Hall was certainly impressive with its display of weaponry. There were so many different buildings you could go into at the castle, everything from showing what the prisoners' quarters would have been like to art displays. We could have spent hours and hours here. Apparently everyone else agreed because there were tons of tour groups and visitors there. It started pouring rain, so we had a quick bite inside the castle cafe and had some chutney and cheeses. Our next stop was Ross Fountain, which was a downhill walk from the castle, about 15 minutes through some beautiful gardens. As you can see, the sun is now out, but a second ago, it was pouring rain. I think I still have water droplets on my glasses. I don't know if you can see them. The Scottish weather is very confusing. Also, it was not supposed to rain today, so we all left our raincoats back in the hotel, and we've been rained on four times? Four times. 
four or five times, yeah. Yeah, the fountain did actually have beautiful views of the castle up on the hill behind it. And it's painted blue, not due to rust or exposure to the elements, but rather in the style of how it was originally created in the 1860s. This is what they think it would have looked like back then. We waited our turn along with the other tourists to get our photo, and I thought it turned out nicely. Okay, we're having a what? Iron brew. At the Ross Fountain at Edinburgh Castle. We're doing the most Scottish thing ever, apparently. Oh, that's like an orange cream soda. An orange cream soda? Yeah. That's kind of, right? Like, it's kind of like a jelly bean. What the? What is that? I'm strong now. On our way back up the hill to the Royal Mile, we happen to see the National Gallery with free admission. And Cordelia and I are such art fans, we decided to power through the downstairs exhibits while Cole and Helena waited. They had all kinds of Impressionist, Renaissance, and even some older works. Back on the Royal Mile, we wanted to get tickets for the Scottish Whiskey Experience, but they weren't available for an hour. So then we just walked around the mile a little bit. It's actually harder than you think to get a video or photo of a bagpiper by themselves because people just stand next to them and take their picture or ask someone to take a video. Jolly's close or like Jolly's closed? Ha ha ha, good one Cordelia. But seriously, all these closes or alleyways led to other streets or courtyards and it was so fun to peek through them all. We mooched about the souvenir shops full of Highland cows and of course all of the plaid and tartan patterns you could imagine. And then it was our time at the Scotch Whiskey Experience. I would recommend booking tickets in advance just given our experience of it getting filled up quickly. It was a super interactive display and going through different rooms and experiences, learning how single malt Scotch whiskey is made and how the different regions produce different flavor notes. We all got to select which kind we wanted to try and I was stuck with Islay because they all chose something else. But I think I made a really good choice because I ended up really loving mine and loving the peaty smoky flavor of the one that I had. So we walked through this room with the largest display and collection of Scotch whiskey in the world owned by Diageo. And then we got to actually sample our whiskeys. Helena was not a big fan. Cordelia thought it maybe could grow on her. Glasgow is our lowland whiskey this week. Cole wanted to go to a pub older than the United States, and at 1719, this one certainly fit the bill. I'm having a banana old fashioned. This will be my drink from now on. Hey guys, this is it. This is Victoria Street. Diagon Alley. Just around the corner, about a five minute walk from the Royal Mile is what is supposedly JK Rowling's inspiration for Diagon Alley in the Harry Potter series, which is Victoria Street and notoriously the most photographed street in Scotland. We got there after most of the shops were closed, so I would recommend going a little bit earlier in the day, but the street is so cute. I mean, look at this. I get why it's so photographed. We walked up the many flights of steps to the top of Calton Hill, which is a hill overlooking the opposite side of the city, so you can see the castle in the distance here. We went up for sunset at 10 o'clock, which is pretty late, but it's pretty northern there. Although it was so cloudy, we couldn't really see the sun setting, but we could see the lights come on in the city and the views were still really cool up there. One quick note about the weather, we were prepared for it, so we were fine, but it was very windy and we had done some research and saw that that was one of the elements of the Scottish weather. So definitely recommend a windbreaker. It was pretty cold, even though we were there in the middle of the summer. Cole and Cordelia take an action shot walking in front of Arthur's seat and don't stumble, Cole. <laughs> that was done in one take. It's pretty good. <laughs> also on top Calton Hill is the Scottish National Monument honoring war heroes and it is modeled after the Parthenon. Kind of random to see this Parthenon type structure up there, but it was pretty cool. 
Day two, let's check on our drying underwear and socks. Still not dry yet. Okay, we missed breakfast yesterday morning because we got a late start, but baked beans for breakfast? Stewed tomatoes? What is this? Okay, sausages, I know what that is. Bap? Looks like a hamburger bun. We asked the hotel concierge to call a taxi cab for us to go to Swanston Farms. After a 20 minute cab ride, we were there for the sole purpose of seeing Highland cows. Okay, Cordelia, what are you excited about? Cows. Swanson Farms actually has a golf course and village and little restaurant and close to all of those, just a short walk away, penned in, they had some of these Highland cows. And they're so renowned because of their long woolly hair and the very endearing way it falls over their face and covers their eyes. I mean, look at that face. They're so fluffy. Remember what I was saying about the wind? Yeah, anything where I have the audio up, you're gonna hear that wind blowing. It was so windy. Anyway, it was super cute to see them in the pen here, but the real attraction, reason we came to Swanston Farms, was we had heard you could hike in their public lands, get a beautiful view of the city, and maybe see any of their cows that were roaming the hillsides. The challenge and mystery of this event was we didn't know where they were, and even when we checked in with the restaurant, they weren't sure where the cows were currently. And so really this was an adventure, and we weren't sure if it was going to be successful or Deeper, not. what do you see? Cows. But we found them! Right here next to the Highland cow. It's right next to me. The signage did suggest to keep your distance. Look at that little guy. It's not a little guy. It's huge. <laughs> And then there's one. And there's Colin. I mean, Enbra. There were only a couple here and they didn't have the big horns, so we kept walking until we found, do you call it a herd if they're Highland cows? I don't know, but a group of a bunch more cows with the big horns, the iconic big horns. This was definitely a highlight of the trip for us, just watching these amazing, magnificent, hairy, wooly beasts with their truly amazing horns munch on the grass so peacefully seeing the view that they had overlooking edinburgh feeling the wind whipping through all of our hair their fur or hair all of the grasses it was just an amazing experience it's really useful Our return taxi cab dropped us off at the Elephant House, which is the birthplace of Harry Potter, where J.K. Rowling did all of her original writing, and right around the corner from Greyfriars Bobby. So this statue here with the bronze rubbed nose that everybody touches for good luck is in honor of the goodest boy ever. His master died when he was two years old, and he never left his master's grave site. I can't even talk about it without crying. What is wrong with me? I just love dogs so much. But anyway, people come and they drop little sticks off in front of his grave. So for the 12 remaining years of his life, he laid at his master's grave and wouldn't leave it every day. And people had to bring him food and water right there. Now you're with your master forever. Okay, I don't know why I had to go see this, but anyway, it was a really pretty cemetery, um, despite the sad dog story. We returned to Victoria Street for lunch because everything was closed the night before and we got to try a true Scottish dish. It's real haggis. Haggis, cheers. That's pretty good. It's interesting. It's like sausage or what? It's like meaty couscous. Mm -hmm. Meaty couscous? It was raining by the time we were done with lunch, but that was okay because today we ignored the weather report and brought our rain jackets anyway. Due to the affiliation with J.K. Rowling and the Elephant House and how she used Victoria Street as her inspiration, so many of the shops capitalize on that and have Harry Potter fandom type things that you can purchase and displays that you can walk through. It was really fun to see all of them. Back on the Royal Mile, we walk through the Tron Kirk Market, which features local artisans, and flip through to see if we could find our specific tartans. I was looking for the Ross family for my grandma's side. It's our second day in Scotland. And our second bag of tablets. Tablets are fantastic. Our? Our is. Our tablets If you're doing it now, oh. I mean, our. If you're doing it past, I think it's A. No, you mean were. Is it A tablet or a tablet? 
tablets. I don't Wait. know. It's like fudge. Like fudge is plural. But is tablet plural? Like you don't say I had fudges. We had a little bit of time before our underground tour, so we wandered through St. Giles Cathedral, which was built in 1124. That's right, it is celebrating 900 years of operating as a church and was the home church to John Knox. It's free and open to the public with donations welcome. Okay, I love Edinburgh so much. Check out this punk rock weaver on the streets. We saw her both days and thought she was fantastic. We had heard a recommendation to take a tour to see some of the underground areas. So we signed up to do the Mercat Doomed, Dead, and Buried Ghost Tour, which was only for adults. Children were not allowed on this tour. And they told us some stories. Then we walked down underneath the city where our guide Marina told us some animated and chilling tales of the people that used to live there. And maybe still were. Do you feel anything back there? Kidding aside, what was crazy to understand and appreciate is that people lived down there. They had industries, families, and all underground. Fitting for a ghost tour, we ended in a cemetery, the Cannon Gate Cemetery, which was technically outside the walls of the original city. Okay, so it was just pouring. Now the sun is beating down. And over here, we have a rainbow. What was your favorite ghost story? Mr. Mr. Boots has to be my favorite. Did you hear the stomping? I heard the stomping. Yeah, to have like a worker that kind of hangs out. There's little corners and stuff that's on, but it, it, that could be right. We found the best place for dinner. It's called Cannon's Gate and they have live music every night. Ordered traditional Scottish food, fish and chips, bangers and mash, and of course, haggis. Listening to this festive traditional music was the perfect ending to our two days in Scotland. Here it is, sunny, cloudy. Here it's pouring rain. <laughs> The next morning we had one last attempt to dry our socks and underwear. Then we loaded up our suitcases and walked back to the church where we had been dropped off two days ago. Thank you so much for joining our vlog of our two full days in Edinburgh. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy this content or me or my kids or my daughter's fiance. Okay, that came out sounding really strange. But just subscribe because it's fun and we're fun and we'll have fun together. Okay, but if you like the vlog style, here are some other ones so you can keep watching and have fun and I'll see you in the next one.